We got our guy Isaac Feldman here who used to work with us. He yeah. works at the Sports Network. He fought last week and won. Winner by knockout from Long Island, New York, Isaac yeah. Feldman. Woo! Here's the problem with that. Now with the proliferation of MMA. Yes. You ain't got anybody. You have no idea. Because that dude, Isaac, who's a great kid, yeah. you'd look at him and go, I'll probably have this guy. I can handle this guy. He'd kill Meanwhile, you in 30 what? seconds. What? Right. Hey! And they're like, oh, damn, I hurt the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs>Yo, what's up? Ike Feldman, back for another Iketagon.com episode. You guys are listening to the Mind, Body, Soul podcast series. Thank you. That's the more detailed, more stuff going on there in terms of fighters' thoughts, philosophies, fighters' physicality, techniques, fighters' spirituality, what they represent what they express in the cage on fight night. That's all good and whatnot. But this is the Iketagon.com episodes. Got a huge issue with judging and scoring what's new in the world of combat sports. But before I get to that again, I'm Mike Feldman. Iketagon.com, I-K-E-T-A-G-O-N. I promised you guys over and over and over that I would release the new career news it's out there, the cat's out of the bag, the fighters out of the cage. Me, your lovely Ike Feldman, has teamed up with MMA broadcaster legend Mike Straka. We do the podcast, weekly podcast with guest interviews, weekly takes, some comedic takes called the MMA Mavericks. That's a plane. You'll hear those sound effects in the show as well. But the podcast is going well. Me and Mike's chemistry is going well. It's Mike and Ike. You know, how could it not be good? It's very easy to uh, to assume that it would go well. You know, our names rhyme and uh, that's it. When uh, the Believe Network connected us, this is the network that is funded from the same producers that produced the movie La La Land, the Oscar-nominated and winning movie La La Land, which I still haven't seen, but they're producing us. And the movie Sicario and with Benicio Del Toro and Josh Brolin, Emily Blunt. Also the movie 12 Strong with Thor, Chris Hemsworth, yeah, that's the company that's making this podcast network, and we're making them all the fucking money. But no, they uh, they believe in us. It's Believe Network, and it's going well. So that's that. Mind, body, soul is that. Let's get into some judging, scoring. Let's go. James Krause, UFC 247, fills in on short notice against Trevin Giles at a higher weight class. James Krause is in the MMA scene, hardcore MMA scene in the background. He trains with fighters like Megan Anderson. He's been on Ultimate Fighter episodes. He's been on submission tournaments, uh, quintet to be more specific. He was there to support his fighter uh, for UFC 247. And it turns out a fighter fell out of their fight and he steps in to fight Trevin Giles and he does it on short notice. He said he was underweight, didn't have to cut a whole ton because it was a higher weight class. He fills in. Dana White commends him for filling in. He does a great job, goes all three rounds, performs very well, wins a round, but doesn't win the fight, and that's the controversy. Why didn't he win the fight? And it came down to scoring from the scorecard of Judge Joe Solis, who also scored John Jones four rounds and Dominic Reyes one round. That was the main event for UFC 247. But James Krause felt slighted and he felt he deserved more. Dana White in the UFC took care of him with a fight bonus, and I'm sure they're gonna pay him to take it easy and not sue the Texas Commission or the judges that were assigned to his fight. 
but James Krause is not happy, especially when he finds out that Judge Joe Solis and Trevin Giles, James Krause's opponent, have trained under the same sensei, Eric Williams. Judge Joe Solis received his black belt from Eric Williams and Trevin Giles, I don't believe he's a black belt yet, but he trains under Eric Williams for jujitsu, I assume. And that's not a good look. That is 100% a conflict of interest, as we talked about it on the MMA Mavericks podcast. And that's bad. That's really bad. And Dana White's definitely going to take note of this. He's going to be very upset at the Texas Commission and the judging for UFC 247 because there are multiple fights and decisions that fighters and more boisterously Joe Rogan and his color commentary partner Dominic Cruz, former UFC champion, they disagreed with. They thought that Jonathan Martinez beat Andre Yule, in which Joe Solis ruled in favor of Andre Yule. Joe Solis also determined that John Jones won four rounds to Dominic Reyes's one round, which was a very bad call. Dominic Reyes at least won two rounds. There was an iffy third round. So, John Jones pundits and people who are in favor of John Jones winning that fight at most ruled that he won three rounds to two, uh, to Dominic Reyes's two rounds. The fact that Joe Solis picked Jonathan Martinez over Andre Yule and trained alongside Trevin Giles and picked Giles over James Krause and then gives John Jones four rounds to Dominic Reyes's one round is a bad look. He's probably going to be under the table suspended, meaning you're not going to hear about the suspension, but he will not work certain events when the UFC comes back to Texas or if they travel elsewhere and Joe Solis is slated to work. Dana White will be like, pump the brakes. I don't want this guy. I don't want his name connected to my organization right now. So in one way or another, Joe Solis will be penalized and reprimanded and will have to rethink his uh, scoring criteria and his, uh, the way he judges. So James Krause, God bless your brother. Thank you for filling in, saving a fight and giving Trevor Giles a paycheck and keeping the paycheck intact. But justice will be served, brother. I know it. Moving on, what else we learned from oh, I, oh, oh. what else we learned from UFC 247 is that maybe we should incorporate or instill live scoring in which each round after each round the audience in the arena, the fighters, the audience watching at home, they will know the score. And you attach the judge's name to each round and each score given. So if a judge rules 10 points in favor of John Jones or 9 points in favor of Dominic Reyes in the first round, you will know going into the second round, John Jones is up a round. A lot of people don't like that because boxing doesn't. And they say that boxers have tended to coast when they know the round. Uh, if they're up by five, four, or six rounds, or seven rounds, and it's late, maybe they can coast, hang out, play defensive fighter, and just pad their victory and pad their salary and move on to bigger and greater things and not, not really assert their or use up their entire gas tank or their energy on one particular fight. I disagree. I think fighters should know the score, the audience should know the score. One, in case there's bad scoring, Joe Solis. Two, I think it's more incentivized and it's different than boxing. If a fighter knows he is tied with his opponent heading to the third or the fifth round, he might step on the gas a little more. Or if he's losing three rounds to one, heading into the final round, or he's losing both rounds, heading into the third round, Maybe he'll be incentivized to push it a little more and go for a knockout. It's different than boxing. One, because the gloves are thinner. And two, the gloves are thinner. He can knock him out. A lot more can happen with thinner gloves. And if you're telling me a UFC fighter is going to coast, kind of just jab on the outside, that's not going to work because he's going to get countered and he's going to get knocked out. Luckily, the Kansas Commission has incorporated now live open scoring and they promised they're going to 
do it for upcoming event upcoming an event i don't know if it's invicta fc which takes places their home is in kansas but uh it's gonna happen i think it's this weekend it might be next weekend so we're gonna find out immediate research and experiments with this live open score and i think it's great puts the judges on blast and it incentivizes the fighters to go for the kill maybe he thinks he's up two rounds and it's just tied and then he's just he's baffled by the judge's decision let him be pissed off let him look up in his corner and goes oh shit. i'm down by two rounds oh shit. i'm losing three to one in the score uh judges scorecards maybe i gotta hit the gas maybe i gotta go for a finish a knockout a submission i think it is only good the incentives and dana white's based his whole ufc structure and win structure off incentives there's a show bonus you get half your pay if you make the walk to the cage and then there's a win bonus you get your other half if you win there's a fight bonus and a performance bonus if you do well in your victory those are kind of iffy i've heard some back and forth takes i heard that you're, you should 100 percent get your wins you should get a finish bonus if you finish the fight you should get another bonus if it's entertaining or if it's fight of the night i'm sure the fighters are fighting harder to get the win because the win bonus is not guaranteed i'm sure but the sport has evolved it has changed it is on espn it has been sold for four billion dollars apparently ufc fighters received the the smallest amount of payout from revenue compared to any other sport usually revenue floats at about 45 to 55 percent for athletes football players baseball players basketball players to receive from the company's yearly earnings apparently with the ufc the fighters receive about 15 percent not even in the same ballpark no pun intended or court or gridiron as the other athletes so <sighs> If they were to receive the win, uh, the the show and win bonus in one paycheck automatically, and then you could do a submission bonus or a finish bonus, a knockout bonus, a fight of the night bonus. Maybe it would be upwards of 30 to 40 percent in terms of fighter revenue, which is fair at this point. The sport is on ESPN. It was just sold about three and a half years ago for four point something billion dollars. Give these fighters a little more guarantee them their win money and show money is in one paycheck give them more incentives for finished because that's what we want at the end of the day exciting fights so what we learn exciting fights need to be incentivized to start put the judges on blast with their open live scoring the fighter will know that he has to go for the kill if he's down and he can't blame the judge if he gets the finish he gets a victory Give them finish bonuses. Give them something to look forward to if they try a little harder. Finish is not easy. A knockout of submission is not easy. So incentives are great. They're always great. Just make it make a little more sense and stop being so stingy, UFC, okay? Let's spread the love. Spread the love. Spread the love. Spread the love. That's right, everybody. Spread the love like peanut butter on fruit. See ya.